Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today to talk electric and to check out the new StarTech Tesla Model 3. Based on Tesla's entry model in the lineup, this is the dual motor specification wearing the full StarTech conversion package, which today I'm going to take for a first drive. Now we're familiar with StarTech, the sister company of Brabus, famous for their work on the Mercedes-Benz portfolio, but now also turning their hands to other products, including this car, as you can see with a new look to the front end, has things like new wheels, a lowering suspension set, and some changes as well to the interior. Now, prior to today, I've not actually driven the Model 3. I have been as a passenger out in one before, and I've driven the other models from Tesla's lineup. But today is also going to be my first drive of an electric road car out on a track here at a race park to experience what it's all about, as well as thinking about whether it might be time for an electric car to join the Schmimobiles. <laughs> Before we get into all of the action, let me take you for a quick introduction to this specific car and the changes that StarTech have made. And there's also quite a lot for me to learn. For example, this is the key, the credit card, for the key instead of a normal fob that you might be carrying. Now the Model 3 slots into the Tesla lineup as the smallest car. The lineup now consists of the Model S, the Model 3, the Model X and the Model Y. Yes, the S3XY, you can work out what that means. This is the dual motor version. That means we've got a motor for the front axle plus a motor for the rear axle. Total output with the four wheel drive of 450 horsepower and 600 newton meters, which means even this car does the zero to 60 mile an hour sprint in 3.2 seconds. That is pretty crazy to begin with, to be honest, a car that is not all that expensive. Now this car with the StarTech conversion starts right around the front. You'll notice it has a completely new front bumper, a totally new look to it, everything from the headlights forward. We've got new fog lights installed down towards the base as well. If we come round, we've got the monoblock M wheels, the wheels all around. It's also sitting a touch lower than standard, about 30 millimeters, three centimeters or so, just over one inch. We've got some carbon fiber around. We've got the new extended side skirts. You've got the three piece spoiler that's been installed over the boot lid just to make the rear end look a touch more sporty as well and a couple of other changes generally to the exterior if we come and check out the interior of the car which unlocks as you walk up towards it give the handle a pull it's actually quite a nice process to that they do do a full package as well to put alcantara over the inside surfaces but it's all very simplistic in the tesla it's not totally crazy that's the thing about this car I guess it offers a lot of usable functionality, automatic functions, autopilot driving, these kind of things in different markets. But when you take a step inside, this is the fairly odd thing for me. The way you start it is that you take this key, you put it on there, and then you put your foot on the brake. That's now effectively started. To drive, you would then do this, you're in drive, and off you go. As you can see, we are, however, at the race park just here, where we're going to be heading straight out, because to be honest, I want to see what this is like, what it's like to drive an electric car on a track, but also think more about whether I should be considering an electric car in the garage. I've actually been toying with the idea for quite a while now. It's just a case of what and when, because I'd love to live with it and get a proper feel with it. For the time being, though, I've been seeing some videos of these going around tracks, I think it's time to experience it myself. Let's head out, go see what this is all about. I'm heading out the pit straight, but, and you might already know this, before we do actually go out completely, inside here is a box of tricks. In fact, if you click this, you have the toy box, literally with things like the whoopee cushion. Yes, that was lovely. But we also have entertainment, and in entertainment, we have a number of games, including some racing. So the idea here is that while you're in your actual Tesla Model 3, you can be playing a driving game by turning the wheel and dry steering on the front axle, which of course means you are technically scrubbing a little bit of the tires. But the fun of it is that you're playing a game in the car using the actual steering wheel, which is obviously not such a usual experience. Let's just load up defaults and see how badly I'm gonna do at this, and then see if I can do a little bit better out in basically the real world. I mean, this is just crazy. And there are a whole host of different games. This is. A new generation, isn't it? You use the steering and you use the brake and yeah, it works like that. And I'm going to be awful at this. Probably need to slow down a little bit. Um, yes, I, I, I don't know where the ideas for this kind of stuff came from, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to quit that because to be honest, I want to go out and do the real thing. So let's go into driving. Let's go here. Let's go into, oh, 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 because I've been stopped from playing a game. I've got to do the, uh, do the card again, which I suppose is probably the uh, safest option into sport into drive, you can see the track layout, and um, away we get ready to go. Obviously in silence, I still find this 
electric driving experience strange. And I mean, I've done it a number of times now, of course, different models from the Teslas, the Model S, the Model X, and their various uh, derivatives. I was gonna say engine derivatives, but it doesn't quite work like that. And the Porsche Taycan amongst some of the supercars. But I mean, instant torque. Obviously, this is not a light machine. It's about, I think, 1,800 and something kilos. But I tell you what, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty much go, 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 and then foot down, and you get none of that sensation. None of that sensation carries through on the video because you don't feel it and you don't hear anything through the chicane, <laughs> riding the curbs. And this is my first time driving an electric road car on a racetrack. I have driven an electric race car on a racetrack, which was a Formula E first gen car at the Battersea London track setup, which is an FIA sanctioned racetrack. This is just, I mean, you can change some of the settings, but it's a bizarre feeling. I mean, what? <laughs> I actually kind of want to do a Nürburgring lap now in something like this. I never expected it to go so quickly. This is the entry car. It starts at under 40,000 euros, $40,000. And it drives like this. And I tell you what else it does. We come to a standstill on the start line. Yeah, that's some good stopping power as well. Obviously the hazard indicators are on. But if I then put my foot, actually I'm gonna turn those off. How do we do that? You see, this is the thing, right? How do you turn off the hazards? I don't know. I've got absolutely no idea. So I'm probably gonna leave those on. But what I wanted to show basically is a launch control. Put on the throttle, go. Just like that, instantly, away. The numbers build. And then we've got over 100 kilometers an hour already. It's a whole new experience. There's a lot to learn because you don't drive it or interact with it in the way that myself and other, I guess, old school traditional car guys do with something like this. You know, it's, it's all, a whole learning curve. If you want to do the steering column or adjust the mirrors, it's all through the software and the central screen, that gigantic tablet that you have. In terms of driving though, instant torque, a great drive. This is genuinely surprising me. <laughs> this is genuinely surprising me. Of course, some of the weight and some of the understeer, but I mean, this is a great little track. Hug those curbs. <laughs> We're getting some slide on. <laughs> and then power down and out using the four wheel drive. This is mental fun. Yes, yeah, some traction on as well. I'm not going to turn that off because I don't entirely know what's going on with this. expected to have so much fun with this 150 down there oh letting me know that the uh, brake temps are high so I guess that's what you've got to watch out for heavy car at the end of the day and um, driving it pretty hard so let's have a bit of a cool down lap just I suppose take it more easily now like I said I put the steering into sport let me see if I can do this a bit fiddly while driving this is what I don't like we put the steering back into comfort oh yeah it goes completely soft and all over the place to be honest in comparison nowhere near the point of shoot but when you're doing everything electrically I guess you can get away with that and that's how you can approach it what else can we change the regenerative braking so this is the amount that when you just lift off there you feel the car uh, doing the brake basically building up the amount of power extending your uh, total range obviously in the process by conserving the energy using the braking I think for track you probably want more control of that yourself. Actually, maybe you would want it to be on a, on standard to assist with braking when you're off the throttle, as soon as you get off the throttle, to be using the motors to build back the power. And then you've got the acceleration between chill and standard. And obviously we're in standard. In the Model S's, you've got the ludicrous and ludicrous plus modes. As we come back round though, this is where I want a physical button rather than trying to reach for the buttons on a touch screen while I'm driving on a racetrack. But of course, that is not the primary purpose of this car. I fully appreciate that. The acceleration speed is just balmy. The way it gets a move on, and of course the amount of power it can carry through the corners. Just have to watch out on exits, especially when you go a little bit light over some of these corners. This is, 
I mean, it's it's a big, heavy thing. You know, you do feel massively that it's so much heavier than, let's say, a nimble sports car. Obviously, the battery tech, the motors, it all adds up. But it's such a cool experience. Well, it definitely heats the brakes quite quickly when you're driving in a spirited fashion. So we'll just have one last, I guess, little bit of fun and then cool it down, take it easy and bring it back in. <laughs> just... I can't believe how entertaining this is. I never expected it. I never, ever, ever, ever expected that I would enjoy driving this in a sporty way quite so much. Expected. But I do think I need to chill it out, take it easy, <laughs> let the car cool down. I tell you what though, it's a cool experience. It's a different experience, but it's a cool experience. It's fun. It's just a recalibration. And I think in, in my life, talking electric and about the Shamima Beals, one of the hardest things is that I wouldn't have the ability to charge a car at my home. So it would need to be done in this museum or in storage or at public locations. And of course, I often take cars on big road trips. So you have to think about the superchargers, if it's a Tesla or the charging stations along the way to make sure that you can get from your point A to point B. And that just takes a little bit more planning to avoid the range anxiety of whether you're actually gonna be able to charge up. I think you have to take shorter kind of let day legs so that you know you can do it on one tank and stay at a hotel where you know you're gonna get a, uh, the ability to charge up at the end as well. Wow, this has been quite an eye-opening drive though, to be honest, to see that it, it can do that, to see that it can drive pretty hard if you want it to. I, I, I'm, I've surprised myself. I liked it more than I thought I would. That was cool. You know what? I'm honestly just laughing to myself a little bit from that experience. I didn't really know what to expect, but that was not what I expected. I didn't really think, obviously, how quickly the brakes would basically get towards being too hot. And I also didn't think how much fun it could be with the total lack of sound. I know on the video this never translates. If you can't hear the car going up towards the red line, even if you can hear a car but it's not on the red line, it doesn't sound fast. But fast isn't always the most dramatic on a video. It's a bit more complicated than that. But inside the car, it is just simple and easy. Yes, the materials in the Model 3 aren't the best, you know, some of the leathers that have been upgraded in here and Alcantara significantly change it, but you do still have a very plasticky dash and some parts that would be nice to be a touch better. Obviously, it's all controlled through this screen from your driver uh, setup, so you can have your individual settings to the map itself, which works pretty well. I've experienced a lot more of this and went through it in full before. You've got some storage bins here, currently filled with a um, charging pad, um, some stuff down there, some cables, I think that opens up and you've got fairly usable space. You have to close those quite gently and the magnets hold them in place. You've got some cup holders, you've got an armrest as well with a little bit of storage. The seats are fairly comfortable and the roof is really nice. The tinted panoramic roof the way it just goes over the entire top of the car towards the back from that roof line to the very boot lid uh, with the tint that you can see going towards the back of it just it's actually quite pleasant for the money it really is electric door release press the button pillarless windows again nice just really really good details and features about it we've got the stalk by the way for the gear selector park reverse neutral drive uh, wipers and things over towards the left and a few controls so when you want to move the steering column for example you press into the car um, here you go steering wheel and then you use this toggle basically to move it in and out he says up and down you can see how that works all quite responsive um, but just takes me a bit of time to find everything honestly that's the the hardest bit and that does what it says on the tin doesn't it um, just to, to get through and when you're driving pressing a touch screen is a nightmare because you can't find the right button you know you can't you have to look over here not up there where you, your vision should be um, lights locks display driving autopilot full self driving visualization preview speed limit warnings 
it's nice that you can set slightly over the speed limit you know these things read a touch over sometimes you want one or two more navigation safety and security service and software download I guess so yeah model 3 long range dual motor cool all round really really cool and um, what else do we have open the boot open the bonnet as you can hear and I think you can scroll this from displays time driving today amount of power usage I guess that shows you seats or people in the car bring up information I'm just kind of learning a little bit as I go as you can see media your other settings cameras because obviously the car has infinity billion different cameras out the doors obviously the one on the left you can see if I just close the door that's the one just in front that's actually really helpful for parking against the curb or something there are just lots of these features that are all tucked away inside here just take a moment to find yep we've been consuming a lot of uh, a lot of charge until I've now taken a little pause cool right let's hop out because I've opened the boots let's go take a quick look at those and it turns itself off so when you do step out you don't need to do anything I think you just walk away from the car and that's it it will lock itself no stress so you've got a decent amount of luggage space. As I mentioned, you've got the three pieces of the StarTech spoiler, so this part and the two wing parts integrated as well. No power fold for the tailgate of this one, but loads of space. Folding rear seats, actually lots of space because all the gubbins, I guess, sits underneath the electrics and the motors and the batteries. That's all beneath. Shut that back down, come around towards the front. A little bit more space up here as well. So we have a catch note just open straight away. We've got the cables in here. So you can fit a little bit of stuff, but not too much. Obviously, I was driving around with a bit more weight at the front. Could have taken that out and saved a touch. That shit back down and in. So all in all, that was an awesome experience that I've enjoyed quite a lot, it has to be said. I didn't really expect that. I feel like I need to spend more time driving electric cars around tracks to properly experience them in anger. Maybe next time out it needs to be a, uh, a Taycan or the Tesla Model S Plaid, of course, the car that they have created for the Nürburgring. That is quite an interesting proposition as well. For the time being though, that was awesome. I think the StarTec car looks the part as well and made that Model 3 dual motor quite something to drive. So thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Big thanks to StarTec and Brabus for the opportunity. More to come with what you can hear in the background very, very soon. The traditional combustion engine on steroids. That's it for now though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you very soon. Cheers.